today we're going to talk about cellulite. We're going to talk about the factors that contribute to it. And actually a lot of people even say, what is it? Well, cellulite is thinking this way. Think about a hot air balloon and you have four ropes in the basket. And all of a sudden what will happen is this. If you grabbed and in the, in the balloon, if you're sitting in the basket and you grabbed one of the ropes and you pulled on it, it would change the shape of the balloon. Well, that's what happens underneath our skin, within our layers and our connective tissue. All of a sudden, adipose tissue will push. So fat tissue can push up against the, the connective tissue and create a dimple effect. And then it starts to look like this on your buttocks, your legs, and your abdomen. And that happens majorly in the centripetic area, mostly with women, but also can happen with men. It's just more common with women because of the distribution of their fat and also the connective tissue that you have. So what are some of the things that actually influence that happening? Well, number one, adipose tissue. Obviously, there's a distribution of it if there's too much. And what happens is the contributing factors are everything from, you know, hormones. Do genetics play a role? Of course it does when it comes to fat distribution, but also circulation. That's important. Just overall systemic inflammation, your diet, lifestyle, and also exercise. So these are things that can influence it. So when they talk about causal factors, there is like just not one thing that caused it. It's multiple things that conglomerate over time. And now if you start working on each one of those things to make those areas better, you can see some change with the satellite. All right, the first thing I want you to think about right away is just overall circulation, okay? Lymphatic flow. I get this question all the time. Doc, what's the best thing to do with lymphatic drainage? Movement, exercise, vibe plates. Your muscle system has a significant amount of impact on lymphatics. As your muscles contract, it actually causes a compression of them and it moves. That's why I do like vibe plates. Now, if circulation is a contributing factor to what's going on and you contribute to having satellite, then exercising, moving, building muscle, you know, contraction of that system is gonna move that lymphatic soul and circulation and going to help. You can also do things like massage, a dry needling. There's multiple factors that do it. And all these things contribute if circulation and also lymphatic is an issue contributing to it. Next, and probably I'd say in the top two, would be your nutritional requirements and also hydration. Hydration is extremely important. We all, we all know that, okay? But then second of all, once again, I would tell you right away, calorie restriction is really important. You know, if we want to reduce adipose tissue and stop that compression on the connective tissue, then you're gonna need to lose some fat and therefore start with calorie restriction is extremely important. And why? Because once again, when you have calorie restriction, then your body's gonna use up, first of all, it's glucose, then it's gonna start to go after fat and stuff and you can break that down and that's gonna stop some of the compression on there. So diet's really important. And no one diet gets rid of cellulite. It's once again, it's, it's the diet that works for you that you can maintain healthy adipose tissue because there's a certain percentage of women that you have. And you do have a greater distribution of adipose tissue compared to men. You actually have more adipose tissue. You're supposed to have an extra layer within that skin. And that's why women suffer more of this than men. So figure out your nutritional needs are very important, but if you want to start somewhere, go into a calorie deficit start. All right, next, obviously, the one thing that I do like is muscle building. Now, it's really important for men because as you have less fat, it's smoother, it's gonna, everything's gonna change. So therefore, what I want you to do, ladies, is look at building muscle. So you need to you need to hit that resistance training, you need to hit the high intensity training during specific times. I tell women, I think that week two and week four, based on the 28 day cycle, is something to do some more intense training to build muscle and you will have a smoother look. All right, the one factor that does have a look of your skin is your estrogens. So number one, get those tested. Do blood work to see your estradiol, estrone, and estrol. Do your urine work to see all the metabolites because they do have a contributing factor of estrogens that have fat distribution. And then when you start looking at how those things come to play in normal, you might have to actually work on your liver health. So you might have to take things that support it like cystandra or even you know milk thistle based on you know where your hormone levels are at. But it's important to actually make sure that liver function is good, okay? Then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't have any xenoestrogens. Watch your plastics, watch all the, the microfibers that exist that way and, and fragrances, everything that could be a xenoestrogen. That's really important. And once again, make sure you have good gut health because you gotta make sure that once the estrogens are metabolized, they're moved out because they're not moved out, they recirculate and the estrogen dominance becomes a problem. And that can contribute to the distribution of fat through your skin. Last, but I think not least, obviously it's not really in the order because I think this is vitally important, is healthy skin 
healthy tissue support. So doing the things that really help produce good collagen production. So really good vitamin C based foods, enough amino acids. You can get that from just your animal products alone. Do you have to do collagen directly that way? No, but once again, you know, any amino acids can be good. So if you did it, you're fine. When it comes to supplementation, because I always get that question, doc, what about this and this? I don't like to correlate those things. I think there could, there could be really good contributing things if that's your major problem. But I will tell you this, I do like Gota Cola when it does come to cellulite. Now why? Because it strengthens connective tissue. It strengthens connective tissue, helps the blood vessel walls, helps the circulation, improves the elasticity and reduces the, the dimpling, the golf ball marks of, of cellulite that way. And it's been used for a long time for varicose veins and actually poor circulation. Now, once again, as I went through all the factors that can contribute to cellulite, I just think using Gota Cola is actually something that I would put into a lot of people's regimen as they are going through and fixing the things that are going on with it. And then also dandelion root, why? Dandelion root is a natural diuretic and water can actually change the structure of what the skin does as far as like how it appears. And so therefore I've seen a positive benefit by adding Gota Cola and Dandelion together as you are actually doing the things like you talk about all the factors from hormones to diet to connective tissue and all the things that you're gonna to do to contribute to it. So these are some factors I'd look at when you really want to change how the connective tissue and the adipose tissue are creating what people see in the legs, buttocks, thighs, and abdomens, which is called cellulite.